Think of the universe as an eternal creative unfolding. Trees blossom, cells replicate, rivers forge new tributaries. The world pulses with productive energy, and everything that exists on the planet is driven by that energy. Every manifestation of this unfolding is doing its own work on behalf of the universe, each in its own way, true to its own creative impulse. Just as trees grow flowers and fruit, humanity creates works of art. The Golden Gate Bridge, the White Album, Guernica, Hagia Sophia, the Sphinx, the Space Shuttle, the Autobahn, Claire de Lune, the Roman Colosseum, the Phillips Screwdriver, the iPad, Philadelphia Cheesesteak. Look around you. There are so many remarkable accomplishments to appreciate. Each of these is humanity being true to itself, as a hummingbird is true to itself by building a nest, a peach tree by bearing fruit, and a nimbus cloud by producing rain. Every nest, every peach, every raindrop, and every great work is different. Some trees may appear to make more beautiful fruits than others, and some humans may appear to compose greater works than others. The taste and beauty are in the eye of the beholder. How does the cloud know when to rain? How does the tree know when spring begins? How does the bird know when it's time to build a new nest? The universe functions like a clock. To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under heaven. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to reap, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to laugh, a time to weep, a time to build up, a time to break down, a time to dance, a time to mourn, a time to cast away stones, a time to gather stones together. These rhythms are not set by us. We are all participating in a larger creative act we are not conducting. We are being conducted. The artist is on a cosmic timetable, just like all of nature. If you have an idea you're excited about and you don't bring it to life, it's not uncommon for that idea to find its voice through another maker. This isn't because the other artist stole your idea. It's because the idea's time has come. In this great unfolding, ideas and thoughts, themes and songs, and other works of art exist in the ether and ripen on schedule, ready to find expression in the physical world. As artists, it is our job to draw down this information, transmute it, and share it. We are all translators for the messages the universe is broadcasting. The best artists tend to be the ones with the most sensitive antennae, to draw in the energy resonating at a particular moment. Many great artists first develop sensitive antennae not to create, but to protect themselves. They have to protect themselves because everything hurts more. They feel everything more deeply. Often art arrives in movements. Bauhaus architecture, abstract expressionism, French New Wave cinema, punk rock, beat poetry, to name a few from recent history. These movements appear like a wave. Some artists are able to read the culture and position themselves to ride the swell. Others might see the wave and choose to swim against the current. We are all antennae for creative thought. Some transmissions come on strong, others more faint. If your antenna isn't sensitively tuned, you're likely to lose the data in the noise particularly since the signals coming through are often more subtle than the content we collect through sensory awareness. They're energetic more than tactile, intuitively perceived more than consciously recorded. Most of the time, we're gathering data from the world through the five senses. With the information being transmitted on higher frequencies, we're channeling energetic material that can't be physically grasped. It defies logic in the same way that an electron can be in two places at once. This elusive energy is of great worth, though so few people are open enough to hold it. How do we pick up on a signal that can neither be heard nor defined? 
The answer is not to look for it, nor do we try to predict or analyze our way into it. Instead, we create an open space that allows it, a space so free of the normal, overpacked condition of our minds that it creates a vacuum, drawing down the ideas that the universe is making available. This freedom is not as difficult to achieve as one might think. We all start with it. As children, we experience much less interference between receiving ideas and internalizing them. We accept new information with delight instead of making comparisons to what we already believe. We live in the moment rather than worrying about future consequences. We are spontaneous more than analytical. We are curious, not jaded. Even the most ordinary experiences in life are met with a sense of awe. Deep sadness and intense excitement can come within moments of each other. There's no facade and no attachment to a story. Artists who are able to continually create great works throughout their lives often manage to preserve these childlike qualities. Practicing a way of being that allows you to see the world through uncorrupted, innocent eyes can free you to act in concert with the universe's timetable. There's a time for certain ideas to arrive, and they find a way to express themselves through us.